Hello, and welcome to our Ventura TV. My name is M.B. Hanrahan, and today my guest is Sabrina Rodriguez. Sabrina, welcome. Thank you. My friend, and also the reason why I'm bringing you on today is because to talk about volunteering, of which you are a volunteer extraordinaire in the Ventura Unified School District, maybe beyond that, but that's what our focus is. So this resume is insane. PTA president of this school, school site council, working with Ventura Educational Partnership, working in the Ventura Unified School District, all district volunteer. It must Thank have you. all started off. Well, it's you. <laughs> it all started off with a single act of volunteering. Tell me how you got into it. Uh, well, like a lot of parents, I dropped off my kid at school one day and decided that I wanted to be more connected. I want to see if there was a way for me to give back. Um, I wanted to not only be involved in my school community, but find ways where I could use my skills to benefit not just my kid, but other people's kids. And um, it kind of snowballed from there. Started out doing things like running the centers in my kid's kindergarten classroom or volunteering to do an after school activity. and. I had a very welcoming principal and lots of supportive staff, and they scooped me up and put me to work. They saw an amazing resource. So your background is in biology and conservation science, I'm going to say. So how did you bring that vision and that background specifically into the programs that you were able to work with or the programs that you started in schools? Well, it's kind of, so I started out working with communities in Latin America. Um, that was sort of where I, I started as an undergraduate and then as a graduate school student, um, working with communities to find ways that they could limit deforestation, building local businesses and supporting things like women's cooperatives or grower groups um, that needed a way to make money but that hopefully wouldn't be doing that at the expense of their environment. So that was sort of my, my background professionally. And when I started with my kids at Lincoln Elementary School, we had a, a large population of kids who are homeless or who are in foster care or who are home insecure and don't have access to a garden uh, or don't know how to grow things, have never seen vegetables growing. Have that connection between what you eat and where it comes from. Right, that basic health of, you know, where does my food come from? How do I, how do I grow what I might need to survive? And um, I saw it as an opportunity. I wanted to get involved and because I have a science background, I was able to talk a couple teachers into letting me um, work with their kids. And so we built a school garden. Mm -hmm. And what was really great about it was uh, I was able to get donations for these um, wine barrels and so each student was assigned a wine barrel a half barrel Planner. filled with so mm -hmm. soil to grow their own food and whatever they grew they could take home so the only limit was they had to grow food i didn't want them growing flowers which of course lots of kids want to do but it was really about learning how to be more sustainable learning how to produce your own food learning where food comes from and tasting things that you maybe have not been exposed to at home and yeah. it's, it's been an amazing experience. I mean, having a chance to work with kids, not only seeing a seed grow into a, a plant that's edible, but also taking care of pests, learning about seasonality, where rain comes from, and how the drought affects things like what we grow and what we eat. And it's just been an incredible experience. What's your pitch to people as far as supporting public schools as opposed to some of the other options we have for the ways that we can send our kids to school these days? Well, I think it's, it's great to get involved in your local public school. At, you know, the vast majority of our community's children attend public schools, and as a community, we are going to have them when they're adults, mm -hmm. and we want them to be well-rounded, educated, good citizens that can get a job and be contributing members of our community. But um, I also think it's really important for people to understand that you don't have to be an expert in something to get involved in That's your local excellent. public school. You know, yes, it's great when someone wants to come in and talk about what they do in their professional life and share that with students. But I think it's just as important for students to see that adults aren't always the expert, that we're learning and we're growing and we make mistakes. And um, so, you know, a lot of times when I work with kids, we'll try something and it doesn't work. <laughs> you know, that plant that we thought was going to be great dies or, you know, we, whatever we were doing was a mistake. And that's a great opportunity because not only do they learn from the experience, but they also learn that as adults, we have to be resilient. We have to deal with failure and move on. And it doesn't, you know, everyone has those experiences in their lives. And even that adults help other experts. <laughs> 
it's not always just the adult means I'm the expert in the room. Right. Yeah, no, none of us are islands, right? We all interact with our community. We all benefit from those interactions, and kids are no different. So I'm thinking about the person, the vast majority of people that are already just so busy, and then they, they you know, get their kids to school and like, oh, someone else is going to take care of those kids, hopefully, and teach them something for the whole day. And then they're working or they're running their households. Two, kind of a two-pronged question, you can go with it whatever way you want with it. How do you personally bring in balance to that equation in your own life? And how do you, not sell, but pitch volunteerism to people that already feel like they're going out of their minds or they don't really have the time to put in anything else besides the minimum? Well, I would say I'm probably not that, I mean, like everyone in our society right now, I'm not that balanced. I don't get to the gym as often <laughs> as I'd like. And, you know, we, something my family tries to do is family dinner, but, you know, it doesn't always work. I mean, we're, we're busy. My kids are busy. My husband's busy. Um, so it's, it's a back and forth. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's an imperfect system, but that's, that's kind of the life we live nowadays. I think everyone's balancing a lot of things. Um, but I do think that what you get back from volunteering makes adding that to your plates in the air worthwhile. I mean, it's just incredible to see how easily you can make an impact in a child's life and how, how grateful they are for that. I see kids that have, you know, that I started teaching gardening six or seven years ago. They're now high school students and I see them and they're, hey, Miss Sabrina, you taught me how to grow strawberries or whatever it is. And, and they, they remember that and they appreciate that investment from our community members in their education. And I think that's really at the end of the day what hopefully motivates people to get involved and keeps them involved is that you just put in a little bit of time and energy and what you get back is so much more valuable, not only in terms of your own enriching experience, but also just as a community. I mean, what we get back by raising these kids who feel like as a community, mm -hmm. we value them, we appreciate them, we support them, then when they grow up, they're gonna pass that along and that's really what we need. Service is definitely energizing. So, okay. It sounds like the projects that you've been involved in are very interesting, but any keys about actually motivating kids to get involved or do they just jump in automatically <laughs> all well, the time? I mean, <laughs> kids are no different than adults. If you want to get someone motivated, appreciate what they do, right? Mm. I mean, we all want to feel like the time we spend on whatever it is, whether it's our family or our job or our nonprofits that we work with, that we're appreciated for that. And I think that's something that I learned in PTA, that if you appreciate what someone has done when they've done some small act of kindness or volunteerism, they're more likely to do the next one because it was valued and, and it was acknowledged. And I, the students are the same. You know, students want to get involved. They want to feel appreciated. They want to feel praise. Mm. And um, unfortunately, with classroom size, getting bigger. I mean, I think it's just really hard for our teachers to be able to pay attention to 30 kids or 35 or 40 kids, depending on, on your classroom experience. And so as a volunteer, I can help with that. Mm -hmm. I can be the person that pay, pays attention to that kid that needs a little bit extra help or, you know, needs a redirect, needs to run around, get their hands dirty. <laughs> right, right. Um, I teach sometimes. And I ask this question of teachers. Um, what was your experience of school and how bad or good does that affect your service style, if at all? Hmm, that's interesting. <laughs> um, wow, so I grew up um, in a small farming town in Northern California and I went to my local uh, public elementary school, but that was back in the day when our public schools had music class and art class mm -hmm. and Kindergarten was, you know, two thirds nap time and snack, and <laughs> one third learning <laughs> substantive information. So it was just a really different experience from I feel like what our kids see now. And because I had that experience of a really well-funded, um, albeit maybe not super innovative, educational background, it was integrated. Yeah, I mean everything was at school. We had after-school sports that were free and that you could mm. participate in. I played basketball. I was probably the only kid in my school who was asked by the choir director not to sing. <laughs> She's like, I'm, I'm glad you want to be here. Just please, you know, mouth the words because you don't have that kind of voice. Uh, but, you know, I had those opportunities. They were all free. I could do all those things. And unfortunately, that's just not, not where our public schools are right now. So we aren't able to provide those things for free. And so that's, again, kind of where as a volunteer, you can 
help revive some of those. There's more energy to possibly expand just the, we need to do this because we have, we're getting tested on it. We need to do this because right. we yeah. have to do this. And oh, that's a good yeah. point. No one likes being in that pressure cooker. I mean, if all you do is go to school to be filled with information for a test, I mean, that's just an incredible amount of pressure to put on kids. And, and it's not fun. I mean, none of us want that kind of day where it's just drill, 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 and then go home, right? We want our kids to, to do more homework. Yeah, we want them to enjoy the process of learning, to hopefully continue that their whole lives as adults. I mean, that's something I know you do, and it's something I do as well. Like, you know, you try new things, you learn, and uh, that's what we want for our kids. Well, and to live in such a way that's pointing toward the future. And that's what I was going to ask you is what, what does give you hope for the future specifically of the upcoming generations? And, or you can go into school systems, whichever, whatever it is that you're doing right now that you feel gives you hope for the future. Well, I, I mean, I, th I don't at all feel hopeless, um, which is <laughs> Yay, <laughs> maybe surprising, but I mean, you know, you can't spend much time around teenagers and feel mm -hmm. hopeless. They're so energetic and they're so excited and they want such great things and they're willing to work for them. I have not seen the, the teenager who doesn't care or who's disconnected or who just wants to play on their phone. I mean, of course, we're all easily distracted by things, but I think today's youth is doing amazing things. And they're looking at the problems that our generation and previous generations created and they're trying to figure out how to do something about it. I don't see apathy in them. I mean, I, I'm sure like any group, there are some who are apathetic, but I think there are some really dynamic kids who are doing robotics, they're doing bioengineering, they're doing you know, really cool new technology that hopefully is gonna help fix some of the mess we're in as a, as a community and as a planet. And um, I don't know, I think they're, they're really exciting. How does someone get in touch with you? Probably the easiest way is through the Ventura Education Partnership. We okay. have a, a website. Um, what the Ventura Educational Partnership is? The, it's the foundation that supports all of the public schools in oh, okay. Ventura Unified. So um, as, a, as an organization, we're kind of the PTA of the whole school district. Mm -hmm. We raise money every year to give teacher grants and to support classroom innovations. Um, we are all volunteers, and so we have um, 24 members of our board who all give their time because they believe in our public school system and they oh, want to wow. make a difference. And, sure. Um, we have events year round, so we do things like Summerfest where people can come and learn about a healthy lifestyle and it's free to everyone in the community and it's free to participate as a vendor. Or you can come to something like StoryFest and every kid who comes gets a free book and they get to see members of their community modeling literacy, which we know is super important for kids, you know, coming and just seeing that adults read and that mm -hmm. they care about kids reading. Um, it's a great organization and um, we do a lot to, to help our kids. So if someone was interested in volunteering, they'd get in touch with you through them and how they would do that is? Through either our Facebook page or our website. Okay. So you can uh, see the website? Yeah, so VenturaEducationPartnership.org is our website. Um, we have a Facebook page and um, that's a really easy way to connect, ask questions, um, you know, just kind of in general be informed about what's going on in our public schools. If I didn't volunteer so much already, <laughs> I'd be doing more volunteering. You do a lot already. It's, and, <laughs> it's Thank you, and it's been an absolute pleasure. And thank you for joining us today on our Ventura TV. I'm MB Hanrahan, and we'll see you again. Thank you.